Okay, gang. We're going to talk about higher order derivatives now. And this is the notation for it. This is the one that I've been showing you that I've been sticking with. So this is first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, and to the nth derivative. Uh, you guys are also familiar with this one, right? F prime, F double prime, right? Third derivative and on and on. Uh, this is the one that we're going to get to uh, shortly. I'll start, you'll start seeing me use this. I don't usually use this, but you guys are welcome to use these other notations as well. These first three are the most uh, common. You will see some of it the, uh, these other ways, but usually you see it more the first three. So I know this is in the other format, but this is asking for the second derivative of this function. So how you're going to find the second derivative is go through the process of finding the first derivative. And then from the first derivative, you're going to get the second derivative. All right, so let's go ahead and find the first derivative. So that's going to be using the power rule, 7x6, 15x4. And then the derivative for 2 is a con uh, uh, two is a constant, so the derivative goes to 0. So this is the first derivative. And now I'm going to take the first derivative and go to the second derivative. As you can see, like a, a formula could be written for this, uh, but we're just going to go ahead and find the, would you just, you know, if I needed the third derivative, I would just go again. All right, so here we go, second derivative, so power rule. Power rule again. Let's see, what's that going to be? 60 x to the third. And that's it. That's the second derivative. Um, let me see if I can dig up something here for you guys. Ooh, yes. I've got something. Now do I have a piece of paper? I do. Okay. So I want you guys to find the second derivative of this function. All right, so let's so we're going to start with the first derivative, right? So the first derivative of this function would be secant x tangent x. Now the second derivative, if you notice, when we took the first derivative, it became a product. So now for me to take the second derivative, what rule do I have to use? Good, I have to use a product rule because now I've moved now what I'm trying to take the derivative of is a product. Oh, I'm calling this f. I hope this doesn't confuse anybody. This is your f, this is your g, but <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from that so I don't confuse you with the rule. All right, let me let me call this guy h. I'm so I don't want I don't want you guys to get caught on the little little details that can get confusing here. All right, let's just call it h so nobody confuses f with f. All right, so now we're going to use a product rule here. So if you remember the rule, it's, f it's the first times the root of the second. So the first part here, secant x times the derivative of the second part. I'll get my little pen so you know when I'm taking the derivative. Derivative of the second part. Now derivative tangent is secant squared x. All right, that's the derivative of tangent. That's g prime. All right, now we do the opposite. We're going to add. Product rules add. Quotient rules subtraction. Now we're going to do the opposite of that. So now we take the second guy, leave the second guy alone, leave g alone, and we're going to take the derivative of f. So now the derivative of f, derivative of secant, is secant x tan x. All right, so I'm doing the product rule here. That's why this has just like gotten huge. Let's, so the derivative is over. The huge excitement is over. But let's format it so that it looks pretty. All right, so here we go. Secant times secant squared is secant cubed of x. And this times this is secant x tangent squared of x. Now I've realized that I should point out something um, 
just to make sure we're all on the same page. And yes, we could do another step there. But you have to make sure you understand what I'm writing. And I'll probably stress this again later on in the course because this is a concept I notice confuses students. Secant cubed of x means, what it means is that you have three secants. You have secant x, secant x, secant x, okay? Secant cubed x means that you have three of those trig functions, okay? Which is not equal. You gotta really watch. Math is real particular. You gotta watch that you do not say this. What do you think this means? Because the three now is on the x. It's not on the trig. So this means, which is not equal to this, you have one secant with three x's inside of it. All right? So when the three is on the trig, it means you have three trigs. When the three is on the inside, it means you have three inside. So please watch that. That is going to become really important, especially in the next section. All right. Um, I would give you full credit for this answer. This answer is lovely. Um, but you can go another step. You can take out the common factor of secant. So I'm going to leave it there, but if your brain is like, wait, Professor Whelan, you can go another step. You're absolutely right. Right? You could use the... Um, Pythagorean identity for the tangent squared, right? So there you could you could keep fiddling away with this and I know some people love to do that and that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to stop it there. So uh, let me see. I probably will just do one more video after this. I just want to maybe grab like a where you have to sort of rewrite the function before you take the derivative and the algebra is difficult. Okay, so I think one more video here and then we've got it. All right, catch you gang. Hope you're enjoying it. Catch you. Bye-bye.